forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know?
know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for His Worship the Mayor? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to tonight's Ordinary Council meeting. I'll open the meeting at 7.04. I'll call for apologies. I have one apology from Councillor Halls. Are there any other apologies? I think everybody else is present. We'll move to item two, confirmation of minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of June, 2022, be confirmed as a true and accurate record of proceedings. So moved. Moved by Councillor Strowett. Is it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Marsh. I'm presuming on this occasion the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. No, I'm presuming no other councillor wishes to make amendments to the said minutes. If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Councillors, you will note on our agenda this evening that we'll need to do a slight change of the agenda. Item 13.2, the adjourned item from the previous meeting, is listed as adjourned. On the advice of that matter, we'll need to bring that item forward and resume that matter based on where you left off. Obviously, I was away with COVID. I was not at the meeting due to COVID last uh, meeting, but that is the way that this item will need to be managed. We need to go to item 13.2 now 
and pick up from where that meeting left off. My understanding is on the screen, we will have the names of those councillors that have already spoken to the matter. So we need to pick this item up in relation to that. It's my understanding it was Councillor Strode, I think, that moved the deferral. Was that correct? So we need to move from that point in time. So Councillor Strode, if you wish to speak on that item, then you can speak now to it. Um, if not, uh, we will then move to the second of the deferral, which I believe was Councillor Halls, but she's not here, so doesn't get the right to speak, and then we'll pick up the rest of the debate on this item. So Councillor Strott, do you wish to speak on the item? So councillors, we're at item 13.2, due to um, the advice on how it's been managed to this point in time, we have to now pick it up from that time of the previous meeting due to it being as listed as adjourned in your agenda. Councillor Strott. Um, I don't wish to speak on the um, motion, but I do have a question. All those people that did speak, can they move or second the motion? So now what we're doing, councillors, is you had a motion at your last meeting, which was moved by Councillor Entoulis and seconded by Councillor Marsh, which lists all the items that are there. Mm. This item then was deferred. It's been listed on our agenda as adjourned and under our regulation of practice and based on the advice that I've also received, as I, as I wasn't at that meeting to chair that meeting, because of the item the way it is listed, we need to pick up the item because of the, the way it's been adjourned, it's a carry on. That's what happens if it's moved or lied on the table. So we have to pick it back up from the time in which that occurred. I don't know if Mr Green wants to add any more to that, but that is what we do. It's normal practice for councils if they defer or adjourn such an item, that they pick it back up from where it was left. Okay. So that's what we have to do, councillors. As I said, I wasn't at the last meeting, but that's the way it panned out. So I'm no, just so doing... What I'm trying to say is, do we have to move? Like, I get that's the motion. So the motion's already moved. It's moved. So All those people have already spoken. No, you have to move it again. The okay. motion, we're just debating the motion. So then yeah. what we do now is we go back to that meeting point in time. That motion is on the table. The following members listed have spoken. We pick up from where you are because of the, the move for deferring the item goes to you. Any other council member who hasn't spoken can speak. Then Councillor Antoulis has the right, if he wishes to close the debate, because he moved the original motion. So do you wish to speak on the item? No. Are there any other councillors that haven't spoken? And the list is there, those that have. But obviously, Councillor Antoulis has spoken in terms of moving the motion. He does have the right to close the said motion if he wishes. So is there any other councillor wishing to speak? Councillor Arifi. Thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I think uh, I've got some questions uh, in relation to this uh, item. I know that uh, there are a lot of uh, stormwater work that uh, 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 at, at those sites, uh, which council is responsible for. Can the staff advise, you know, in terms of the cost uh, to to do the stormwater works? Uh, what, what's the the cost involved in that? And, and uh, if the state government decides uh, to accept. Uh, uh, you know, our proposal and debt funds uh, these projects, are we actually ready to, uh, you know, uh, deliver those stormwater projects? Mr Lingwen. Uh, through the Mayor, thank you for the question. Um, I gave a presentation during the week, um, last week, which did my best to um, provide some indication of the amounts that we would be looking at. It's really important to stress, we don't have concept designs or detailed designs, so they're indicative numbers based on you know, unit rates and things. Um, the, the two projects that are mentioned are, um, are certainly Angle Vale Road. The order of the stormwater contribution that we would need to make to that would be in the order of four and a half million dollars, subject to design work. Uh, and for the intersection of Old Port Wakefield Road, Penfield Road, Sheedy Road, would be in the order of $1 million, subject to a significant amount of design work with that. Thank you. Um, my, my concern with the motion is that, in some way, I understand that the staff are advocating for these projects. Uh, in some way, we're kind of undermining 
uh, their advocacy work, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think that uh, we probably need to be a bit more constructive uh, and, and be a bit more strategic with our uh, uh, negotiations with the state government on these projects and not uh, rush through things. Um, uh, and obviously we've got a number of other projects which uh, we still need to deliver. Uh, and I don't think that at this stage, you know, given that we had a detailed discussion last week, uh, uh, I think uh, we're kind of undermining staff uh, ad advocacy work um, on these items. Um, we just need to be a bit mindful that, you know, we've got a new state government. Uh, we need to um, make sure that uh, we engage with the um, local MPs uh, initially before writing to the minister. Uh, and I think uh, 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 based on the presentation last week, uh, I won't be supporting this uh, resolution. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then Councillor Rentoulis has the right to close if he wishes. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to, to close the, the motion. Uh, thank you to, to Councillor Strollett for deferring the motion. I think what was really important here was that an information session was presented to us by Mr Langman, a very informative and detailed information session. And uh, my um, understanding of that session is that councillors um, uh, asked tough questions. There were a series of about 10 to 12 questions that were asked, including in relation to the, the costs, potential costs. And um, there were very conclusive, uh, definitive answers provided in relation to those questions. And one of the answers um, was that this council was not locked into doing anything. Everything that we do is subject to the will of this chamber, subject to uh, future annual business plans. So I, I need to, to really stress that we are not locked into anything in terms of any financial commitment. The intent of this motion is to cause the state government to realign its thinking in terms of how it delivers these types of projects. And as for, uh, respectfully to Councillor Reefy, as for whether these, these projects are in the pipeline, they are. They're in the four year delivery plan almost every single one of them. Council has been working diligently on delivering these now for some time. So, councillors, I respectfully commend the motion to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rantoulis. Then we have the motion that's before us. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare the, mo I declare the motion carried. A division, someone called it out. I didn't quite catch it. Councillor Rantoulis called for a division, so the motion is set aside. Um, and all those voting for the motion, if they can raise their hands. Our code of practice does say stand, but due to uh, the live stream for COVID, if you could raise your hands for the minute taker uh, to affirm your position. Thank you, councillors. The motion is carried. Now, councillors, we return back to the items uh, as per our agenda. So I move to item three. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor on your hand. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I want to uh, declare a perceived uh, conflict of interest on item 10.1, which is about the uh, underdeveloped section of land adjacent to Graeber Road, um, which I uh, also um, talk about during the uh, last ordinary council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anya Zanz. Are there any other conflicts of interest declarations? Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Yes, um, the last two in the confidential item, I have direct conflict of interest and will be leaving the chamber. Thank you, Councillor Smallwood-Smith. So just for clarification, that's 17.2 and 17.3, the items. Uh, Councillors, um, I will declare uh, for this item, 17.1 Central Districts Football Club strategy, a material interest. As you'd be aware, I declared a perceived interest in our committee meeting previously, but due to council having a decision-making power in relation to this item, I'll declare a material conflict of interest due to item that's in the report that may, in my role as mayor, potentially receive uh, a material benefit uh, based on 
items in the report. So I'll declare that interest, uh, leave the room and not take part uh, in any item uh, of the discussion. Are there other conflicts of interest declarations? If not, then we move to item four, Mayor's report. Uh, there's a large number of items uh, on the screen. I won't go through them all. You can all read them at your leisure in the, um, in the minutes. Uh, but I will say it was a pleasure to join a number of you yesterday for uh, citizenship ceremonies again that we were able to achieve now post the COVID uh, lockdown period and regulations uh, set by the department in relation to citizenship and welcome 210 new citizens uh, to the city of Playford. It always is a great delight um, to see our local residents achieve their citizenship and it truly is a fantastic opportunity for them to come together. And for those of you that were also there, uh, it was great to see you there. And also to our elected members who joined myself and the CEO um, as we hosted the Honourable Francis Adamson AC, the Governor of South Australia, and Mr Ron Button, her husband, on a uh, fairly brief tour of the City of Playford, but pretty compact. Uh, her Your Excellency was very keen to see our support of businesses with small business at the Stretton Centre, keen to see our urban growth challenges and to hear about the opportunities based on our 2043 and council plans. Uh, it was fantastic for her to join a number of NDIS businesses at the Stretton and also join executives from the Riverlea uh, project, uh, Walker Corporation project um, out at Riverlea Park. So they're the items that I'll talk about, the rest are all in the agenda. So we'll move on to item five, reports of representatives of council on other organisations. Are there any other reports? No, move to item six, reports by councillors. Are there any reports by councillors? Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks. So just um, very briefly, I want to thank um, our staff in their engagement um, process with this sport strategy um, that you've uh, held quite successfully throughout, um, throughout council. Um, quite quite broad. I think there's been a quite a strong turnout um, of volunteers and executives from various clubs. And I know for a fact, out of the two out of the three um, that I've been to, I've learned a couple of things as well about uh, some other sporting clubs that I'm not very close to that are in in other wards. So um, definitely, there's my ongoing support cross wards um, going going forward. So um, well done to to your staff, and I, I really look forward um, to the outcome of this sports strategy and keeping a broad focus support. Um, but the dollar value, I think, is going to be quite high. So watch this space; it's going to be interesting. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Councillor Smallwoodsman. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I attended all three of the citizenship ceremonies yesterday, and I'd just like to say a huge thank you to the staff. It was an, a very, very busy day, and they did it um, really, really well, as per usual. It was delightful to see so many cultures coming together and becoming citizens. I spoke to quite a few of them, and the beams on their faces were was just incredible. So a big thank you to the staff for the work that they did for that. Thank you, Councillor Small-Smith. Are there any other councillors wishing to make a report? No. Then we'll move on to item seven, reports of representatives, conferences and training programs. Uh, as I was not at the last council meeting, councillors, I uh, did join Councillor Stroud and Councillor Norris at the 2022 National General Assembly of the Australian Local Government Association in Canberra. I have provided my written report to governance and I do understand that both Councillor Stroud and Councillor Norris gave quite a detailed report at the previous council meeting. Um, so I won't dwell into too uh, much of that, but it was fantastic to join all of the councils across Australia in looking at a variety of ways around resilience, um, community recognition, uh, the voice to parliament and the opportunities for indigenous reconciliation and also disaster recovery and in infrastructure across um, local government. And also to join our colleagues from the National Growth Areas Alliance in relation to their member meeting that was also held with ALGA. I also attended the regional forum that looks at issues affecting uh, councils that have rural and regional areas in their communities, and particularly that for forum focused on infrastructure, tourism, and obviously disaster management, um, particularly around fire and flood from across the country in the previous 12 months. But I have provided my report um, to governance. Are there any other rep reports of representatives of conferences or training programs? If not, then we'll move to item eight, questions without notice. Are there any questions? Councillor Onyuzans. Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, so yeah, I have um, this question without notice, um, which is from the uh, community members uh, that resides in the uh, Playford Waters Smithfield. So um, their query is about um, the uh, soft fall um, that uh, was proposed to uh, get done um, in the uh, 2020 to 2023 renewal. Um, so is there any update at all? Uh, with regards to the uh, proposed renewal of the uh, soft form. Mr. Blom. Uh, thank you, Councillor, through the Mayor. Um, yes, we do have the replacement of the soft fall in the asset management plan for this year. Yeah. Um, we also have a number of uh, significant park upgrades across the city. Okay. Um, the playground itself at Strathhead is um, not very old. So it's not due for replacement based on the asset management plan. However, it is in, in reasonably bad condition. Yeah. Um, so yeah. at the moment, we're looking to try and um, we'll put a case forward to mm. bring the replacement of the playground forward. And then we would um, do that at the same time as the softball. So later this year, we'll be putting a case forward to try and um, replace the softball yeah. fall and replace the playground um, later in this financial year. All right. Thank you, Simon. I appreciate that. And I have another one. Go ahead, Councillor Anuzi. Um, so, um, with your uh, indulgence, um, fellow councillors and mayor, um, I was contacted before I raised the uh, question. I was contacted by a couple that resides in um, Redwood. Sorry, um, I lost the uh, street now. Redwood Avenue, um, the corner of Redwood and um, Main Terrace in Blake's Crossing. Um, so they were um, very concerned about the uh, toilet or the um, the placement of the toilet because that's the information that they have received. It will be located on the corner of Main Terrace and Redwood Avenue. And so um, the uh, rest of the people that are connected with them um, also contacted me and uh, they were um, sort of annoyed and really um, uh, cross that uh, there is no consultation that was uh, done along the way. Anyway, um, I got hold of uh, our staff and it was explained properly. Anyway, um, they were provided with a good map where the uh, location would be for the toilet in the uh, change rooms, including the uh, toilet and shower uh, rooms. Um, so um, they've come back to me tonight and said that they're still not happy, but if um, council could actually look at the uh, positioning of the uh, toilet, what, what is current on the map, map um, if that could be joined with, with the uh, um, change rooms and um, toilets together. So anyway, um, the uh, question would be uh, is, um, Will council staff undertake a consultation with uh, immediate residents uh, where um, their homes are facing the uh, oval, Blake's Crossing Oval? Mr. Welsh. Through the Mayor. So um, consultation won't occur with the community on the um, location per se of the change rooms. Um, that's the land that's been set aside for the change rooms. Um, there will be consultation on the concept design and the layout in regards to sort of where the car parking is for it, but that's the land on the corner of Redwood Avenue and Main Terrace that's been set aside for the change rooms. Um, I guess it's important to note that this is a neighbourhood level sports ground, um, so it won't be a huge structure, so it's not going to be your typical club rooms with a social area, it's going to be a basic level change room, umpire change room, etc. Um, just to allow for um, you know, low level junior use of, of that oval. So there'll be, I guess, consultation on the, the concept, but that's the location that's been set aside for the, for the change rooms. Okay, uh, you might get some um, disagreements there along the way anyway. Um, yes, for them anyway, that's, that's a good thing, that's a good start. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Onizans. Are there any other questions? 
Councillor Norris. I just have a quick one. A couple of meetings ago, I just raised a question about uh, Yulee Road Cemetery and, and essentially the care and maintenance, um, and I was advised that it is under council control. Um, I did suggest that we look at um, a maintenance schedule, and I'm essentially looking to see if we have any feedback or we've had an update to the maintenance schedule for there. Mr. Blom. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Through the Mayor. Um, yes, the city operations team uh, have put a maintenance schedule together. Um, I don't have it on hand to, um, to give you the details of it, but yes, we have actioned that. Thank you, Councillor Norris. Councillor Kerrison. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Dockerty. Uh, tonight I've got uh, seven questions um, uh, regarding the tree removal on lot 479 Gurry Street, Manapara. Um, as, as this matter um, did not come before us as elected members, um, and it's become a lot of, uh, been a lot of public interest, um, I felt the need to clarify some questions. Um, the first one is, um, the removal of the tree, seven regulated one sitting room tree, uh, was included in the development application and was part of the CAP decision. I just want to clarify if that's correct. Mr Langman. Through the Mayor, yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to number two, um, is it correct that the trees were assessed and not considered as native vegetation, therefore did not require further consents? Hold on, can you just repeat that question, Mr Langman? I'm just receiving some advice from Mr Crane, just so that yep. Mr Langman is clear of the question. Yeah, so, so secondly, just looking at confirming, is it correct that the trees were assessed and not considered as a native vegetation, therefore did not require f uh, any further consent? Yes, that's correct. That's correct, fantastic, thank you. A third, uh, the decision was assessed under the D uh, PDI Act, and the decision was approved under the guidelines of the Act. Yep. Um, just to clarify that the application was assessed against the provisions of the Planning and Design Code and was approved in accordance with the provisions of the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Regulations 2017 and the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act 2016. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, number four, can Council uh, further confirm that all the rules and regulations are followed in the removal process? Council's knowledge the trees were removed in accordance with the approval. Yeah. All right. uh, number five, the draft development plan amendment um, from the Strategic Planning Committee meeting on the 12th of April 2016, uh, on page 52, item 5.3, showed the property boundary in the approximate midline of the tree canopies. Can we please confirm whether the trees were contained within the boundary line? of lot 479 Mangara Street, Manapara. Uh, the survey plan confirms that the application documentation um, shows all trees were located within the site of lot 479 Mangara Street. Okay, fantastic. Number six, uh, is the portion of Main North Road along Lot 479 McGarry Street uh, under the ownership of the state or federal government? The state government. Does the state, thank you. And the last question there, um, the panel rule uh, resolution cap uh, 482 um, indicated all, all structures and services along Main North Road frontage shall be located outside of the 4.5 metre road widening requirement. Were the trees located in the 4.5 metre zone? If so, did this have any influence on the decision? The trees that were approved to be removed uh, yep. were within the road widening corridor. Um, the decision was made by the council assessment panel though, and so the, it, we're unable to speak to whether that influenced their decision to allow the removal of those trees. Right, thank, thank you very much. I just want to make one point of clarification. In, in question one, um, you requested, um, you noted that there were seven regulated and one significant tree that was included in the development application and was part of the CAP decision. 
Um, so there's a, a small technicality with that that we want to be clear about. Um, the council uh, assessment panel considered seven uh, and one, and the decision notification form included eight and one. So it's a minor point of clarification that um, we might need to tidy up. Are there any other councillors wishing to ask any questions? If not, then I'm presuming councillors Onyuzans, Norris and Kerrison wish to have their questions and their accompanying answers uh, contained in the minutes. Does somebody yes, wish happy to, to do that. Moved by councillor Onyuzans. Is it fine a seconder? Seconded by councillor um, Kerrison. I will put that. If there's no questions from councillors. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Move on to item nine, questions on notice. There is a question, um, some questions from Councillor Coppins. They have appeared in the notice paper. Councillor Coppins. Thank you, Worship. I'm, I'm quite happy with the response that's already provided by, by the administration on this. Thank you, Councillor Coppins. We move to item 10, petitions. Item 10.1, petition underdeveloped section of land by Councillor Onyuzans on page seven. So obviously, councillors, we have a recommendation that the I'll just wait for. Thank you, Councillor Longstands. We have a council uh, or staff recommendation that council receive and note the petition. Does somebody wish to move that way? Happy to move the motion. Moved the by Councillor Stroud. Do you wish to speak? Yeah. To find a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Tame. Do you wish to speak? No. Does any other councillor wish to speak? No other councillor wishes to speak. Then I will put that. Those in favour. Those against. I declare that item carried. We have no deputations representations. We move to item 12. We'll just wait for Council on your Zans to return. We'll just wait for Council on your Zans to resume her seat. We move on to item 12. Motions without notice. Are there any motions? Councillor Strout. Thank you. Um, so our motion is in regards to acknowledgement of country. The motion is that the council begin by acknowledging the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains region at the opening of following council meetings, events and on the meeting agenda and minutes. And on dot points I have ordinary council meetings, all council committee meetings and council functions and formal events. Um, the reason why I'm moving this motion tonight is because in Canberra we were speaking to multiple councils around Australia and what they are doing in relation to opening their councils, functions, meetings, whatever. Um, and most councils around Australia are acknowledging those Aboriginal people, Torres Strait Island people, around their region and around their council area. Um, I think it's best that we do this as a council because we have multiple Ghana people, Aboriginal people, Torres Strait Islander people living in the city of Playford and I think it's best that we acknowledge them as a council. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stroud. Is the other final seconder? Seconded by Councillor Norris. Yep. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Stroud, obviously being in Canberra as well, but seeing that, you know, state functions, we already have events where we, we do this practice anyway. You know, it is symbolic, it has significance for people. We are a very multicultural council, um, and you guys have even mentioned that from the citizenship ceremonies. Um, you know, I think it's just, just a sign of respect to acknowledge the First Nations people when we have an official meeting. So I'm all, all in support. Well, I'll open up the bank. Councillor Smallsmith. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't have a problem with the, the resolution. Uh, as Councillor Norris just mentioned, we do this at uh, council functions and formal events. The only one that I wouldn't like to see is the council committee meetings. I can't see that that's formal enough to do that. Certainly, I don't mind at the ordinary council meetings, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not keen on the council committee meetings. Councillor Marsh. Um, just a question. Is the, in the intent um, from, from the Chair, um, Mayor Doherty, that this would include the CDEP, the Policy Review um, Committee, the CEO Committee, the Governance Committee and anything else? Would, would we be reading um, the intent would in, include all those other side um, committee? 
uh, my intent of reading that with yes, I'd actually, I, you could probably also read it, but I'd, again, it'd be the, up to the interpretation of the CEO of that when you say all council committee meetings, you could interpret that to be committee meetings in relation to youth advisory committee, uh, indigenous um, reference group, um, disability action, action and commu um, inclusion group, you potentially could, but again, that's a decision that Mr. Green and his staff would make, but I definitely, in my interpretation of it would be at the very least, would be the committee meetings such as our strategy and services committee, CDAP, et cetera, along the lines that you've talked about. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor, uh, Councillor New Zealand. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this was put uh, forward um, nearly eight years ago by uh, another fellow uh, councillor. Um, I think the problem that we had, it's also that was just raised by uh, Councillor Smallwood Smith about the uh, council committee meetings. I have no problem um, with, with the others, but but yeah, that, that was a concern. So um, I wonder if someone could, uh, one of our staff could actually um, say something, um, just give us a little bit of feedback there with regards to the motion that's there before us. So you're trying to ascertain from the staff in relation what their reading of when and how this would be interpreted and when and when they would do such acknowledgement? Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, what you're suggesting? Yeah, yeah. We'd just like to, to hear. Mr Graham. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, my interpretation would be committees which are um, created under the Local Government Act um, would be the ones that I would stick to, so service, uh, strategy and services, um, a corporate governance committee, CEO review committee um, are probably the ones that would meet the definition of a council committee being established uh, and the ones that I would be applying that to. If the mover and seconder have um, different views, then we just need to make that clear in the motion. So before we go on, I will ask the mover and the seconder, are there any other, is that your intention of this motion or do you, or is there further additions? I will allow so we're absolutely clear so all members can be clear on what we're actually voting on. Or are you happy with what's there? I'm happy with what um, Mr Green said, yeah. Okay. Yep. Councillor Bacon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Mr Mayor, I don't have a problem with, the, uh, with this happening at formal statutory meetings, and I think that was the intent that Mr Green has just explained. I wouldn't like to see this to descend into something that's just heard at every time we meet and that sort of thing, and... and descending into irrelevance. So I think it would be more important to keep it to the statutory meetings. And my question would be, if we are intending to approve of this tonight, would that require a, an amendment to our meeting procedure policies? Mr Green. Uh, through Mr Mayor, uh, it wouldn't require an immediate uh, amendment to our meeting procedures. Um, we will do. We would do that as part of the next review. Uh, but the resolution alone would compel the council to head down this path. Councillor Gossing. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I fully support this motion. I feel it's about time, and it's long overdue that we pay our respects to the um, First Nations people. Um, I've been very pleased that um, one of our general managers, Tina Hudson, has. Um, uh, taken her own initiative to um, uh, already do this. Um, so, yes, well done. Councillor Reefy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I support this motion. Uh, I think it's a great initiative by Councillor Stroud, um, and I echo the comments made by the uh, um, my previous councillor, um, uh, Gossing. Um, I think uh, it's important that we show respect uh, uh, to the Kaurna people and um, most other councils uh, uh, do this um, as a sign of respect uh, and it's a very uh, minimal work, uh, um, you know, required by the staff uh, uh, to put in the acknowledgement on the agenda. So I support this motion. 
Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks. That um, I appreciate the, um, the the further clarification um, from from staff. I think I, I I don't want the the merit and the symbolic um, symbol around the recognition to to be lost and just thrown on pieces of paper and sort of just ad hocly spoken spoken about. So it's I think quite a, a balanced approach. If you're going to recognise people, you you do it and or cultures, you do it in the right format and not just throw it on um, every every meeting. So if that is the the meetings and the intent um, that the administration staff will take from from this happy to, to, to support it but I also um, don't want it to yeah really been seen as um, some sort of uh, symbolic thing easy to print on on paper and you lose that real real important intent so happy to support it if, if that's the way we're going to go forwards a question if I may yes please. you can Councillor um, Mr Green just mentioned about the council committee meetings being the statutory ones. I just need to know that that's what's going to say and not every single committee meeting we have. Mr Green. Uh, through Mr Mayor, um, councillors, it's my intention to um, give life to this motion by using the statutory committees. As I said before, if that's not what the mover and seconder intended, then that would need to be clarified. My understanding is that Councillor Strollett confirmed that the statutory committee meetings was what she intended. I don't intend to expand that out um, beyond those committees at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So with leave of the meeting, um, all statutory council <coughs> committee meetings, is that does that provide a bit of clarity for everybody? So I'll take that with leave of the meeting. Is leave granted? Is there any dissent to that? I'll, if there is, I'll put a motion. If there isn't, I'll take leave as granted by the council. So that leave is granted for the, is, uh, for the insertion of the word statutory. Councillor Antoulis. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to uh, echo the sentiments expressed by my fellow councillors. This is a, a very important motion. It um, symbolises um, a further step in terms of the reconciliation process between um, uh, the First Nations people and, and non-Indigenous Australians. Um, I do also want to um, to make my feelings quite clear regarding the the importance of not tri trivialising um, the the actual moment. I don't want this to become some sort of token gesture. Um, therefore, it was really important that we um, clarify that this really should be occurring at every one of our formal statutory um, meetings, as opposed to every single meeting that um, where, where council is involved. You don't want to trivialise the, the event. So I'm, I'm happy to support that the motion as it currently stands and I commend it. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak to the item? If not, then Councillor Stroll has the right to close if she wishes. No, that's fine. Thank you. So councillors, we have the motion that's put before us. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Division. Division's been called, so the motion is set aside. So all those voting for the motion, if you can raise your hands instead of rising in your place. Councillors, I declare that carried. Are there any other motions without notice? No, we move on to item 13.1, motion on notice, increase of St Paul presence throughout the Blakeview area. Councillor Coppins. Thank you, Chair. Uh, move that the administration liaise with the local service area superintendent of St Paul, requesting an increase of St Paul presence throughout the Blake, Blake, Blakeview area. Now, this is in response to several residents uh, contacting me and, and notifying me of fears that they have. 
regarding um, gang activity, I suppose we can call it, uh, where, where groups of people are, are actually sort of brandishing weapons in the area. Um, res or many residents are fearful of exiting their home after, after the sun goes down. Uh, or sending sending their children down to, down the street to the local park or reserve to kick the ball around um, late afternoons. Uh, on top of that, there's also antisocial a lot of, quite a lot of antisocial uh, hoon driving activity throughout the area. And I, th I think council need to step up to the plate and provide some leadership and. Uh, provide support to the residents in requesting further an increase in police police presence in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coppin. This is the item for a second. Uh, yep. Councillor Onyuzan. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I support uh, this motion. Um, I don't see any harm. Uh, why not? Um, we, um, just on Facebook alo alone, um, you know, there's so many uh, things happening in Blakeview. Um, currently um, so yeah to have something like this um, in place uh, will be good for the area uh, people will feel safer and um, you know not to worry of uh, anyone vandalizing their properties or um, the community properties and stuff like that so yeah thank you that's all i can say Councillor Small Smith. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'd just like to inform the Chamber that um, uh, a process is uh, going on at the moment in Blakeview for the formation of a neighbourhood watch committee, of which both myself and Councillor Norris are members. Um, we're just waiting on some paperwork and then it will be formalised, and a uh, member from SAPOL has been um, approved to join the committee. So uh, there's a lot of people in that area who are very concerned, uh, and it is, um, it's getting worse, there's no doubt about that. But as soon as this uh, neighbourhood watch is up and running, we will be able to assist more people. So um, I'm not against the, uh, the resolution, but I just wanted the Chamber to know that things are happening up there. It's not just uh, um, something that uh, you read in the paper. People are becoming active. <coughs> Councillor Norris. Um, look, I do appreciate what Councillor Smallwood-Smith has just said. Um, obviously, that is in the works. Um, there are a number of community groups that essentially we're all a part of on Facebook. We see this happening every night, every weekend. I appreciate the intent of the motion. I mean, essentially, I support what you're trying to do. I do think, however, it is a citywide problem. There are issues with, uh, you know, the number of police officers we have at the moment and the recruitment. Um, so I'm just trying to sort of, you know, how do we put one area ahead of others? You know, we've got hooning everywhere. We've got a lady that was found on the road in Elizabeth Grove a few weeks ago that unfortunately passed away today. It's happening everywhere and I just, I, I don't know if I have the answers. I don't know if we have the resources, but I think it's something that all levels of government need to, need to work together to find an answer for. Councillor Ryan. Yeah, um through the chair, don't you already meet with SAPOL uh, quite often? First question. So SAPOL have what's called a community safety committee, which is run by SAPOL. We have a variety of agencies, um, Housing SA, RAF, City of Salisbury, City of Playford, uh, a number of others. There's a, there's a long list, and I don't know if I read them all out, I'll probably miss one. Uh, that the administration attends, uh, a number of different administrative staff attend, along with the Mayor of Salisbury and the Mayor of Playford. Um, they're at, up to SAPOL, but they're usually every couple of months, but sometimes they're more frequent, sometimes, depending on operational resources, they stagger out a bit, but it's in the hands of SAPOL. But yes, there is a regular community safety meeting for the northern suburbs of Adelaide. I mean, for me, I'll, I'll certainly support it, but at the end of the day, it's a state government issue. Uh, we don't run the police force. Uh, certainly we can have some input, but those sort of questions should be aimed straight at our state politicians. Uh, that's their issue. I mean, we can highlight it, and that's why I support it. But at the end of the day, there's not much we can do about it, really. It's up to the state politicians to uh, be made aware of it and push them a bit harder. 
Just for everyone else's benefit, that's chaired by the district superintendent here, the Northern District. Um, lots of information comes at that meeting. Uh, administrative staff and others provide a report on our organisations in issues that may occur that we interact with and also issues that are raised by community along with their operational resources and things that happen um, that they then discuss at certain levels about what may or may not occur and obviously it's at the discretion of the CPOL and, and what they publicly put out in relation to that. But yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a decent meeting it's, um, and managed by, by CPOL. Councillor Marsh. Thanks for that. Um, I'm happy to, to, to support um, this, this motion. And I think um, Councillor Ryan is, I think there's importance in, in this that we're taking on an advocacy role and we're not taking on a role to implement controls um, that are gonna curb crime because it's not what we're here for. So I think we've got to be careful in ensuring our community understands that, that there's a vast different we're advocating. We're not here to implement um, changes, um, i.e. like the Hoons. But I, I do share the sentiment of um, Councillor Norris as well, where it's, it's citywide um, and I think we do owe it to, to our community to continue to put it on public record and to um, let the various tiers of um, stakeholders know if it's the, uh, the LSA, if it's our local MP or if it's our federal or if it's uh, the minister po um, portfolio themselves because I think if we're quiet, um, you might not be able to rely on, on their residents to, to really find the correct pathway um, to, to really raise the, the needs. So I'm happy as a, an advocacy level that we, we keep writing to, to our ministers. And I think um, we, we know that the, the media can be the bad press and always get the bad stories where we're trying to um, advertise that we need more police presence. And I respect that safe hole of being under um, huge, huge pressure. Um, but at the end of the day, um, they've still got a job and that is providing safety to, to our community um, as, as well. So that's for them to sort out. Councillor Kerris. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lockerty. Look, uh, I support, you know, in our role as uh, councillors, we certainly advocate on behalf of our residents. So um, I certainly appreciate Councillor Coppins bringing this forward. Um, however, like Councillor uh, Norris has said, it is a citywide concern. Um, and uh, I sit back here and then say, why are we prioritising one area over another as well? So, um, look, I'll support the motion. I know there is some concerns for you the, through the Blakeview area, as there is right across the city. Um, I know there's concerns in my ward as well. Um, so I'll support this tonight, but I think we need to be uh, conscious that it is citywide. Thank you. Any other councillor time? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I actually did this quite um, a few months ago in regards to um, the Hoon Riders and everything in Andrews Farm. And, and um, I think what we need to even do is, I mean, they need to be able to have, um, you know, more police presence and more recruitment within the northern area. Um, and definitely, you know, having more recruitment and more police presence, um, you know, it would be, um, you know, more beneficial for our area, but definitely um, if we can step it up a notch and, you know, have more um, a presence in the area, that would be a good idea. Yep, thanks. Councillor Craig. I, I kind of concur with the sentiments of the motion, but but really, I think it'd be better that it was Playford in general. I mean, do we bolster Blakeview at the expense of Craigmore or Elizabeth Grove? Or, you know, it's a bit, um, I don't know, the, the government's got so much funding, the police have got so much funding, so much personnel. Um, if we bolster Blakeview, they're going to have to draw them from somewhere else. I don't know that it really helps, really, ultimately, the Playford in general. I think, likewise, too, I think what was said before about really it's about the relevant state MP uh, being approached really they're the ones that pull the strings and, and pay the money uh, fund the police so uh, you know as much as I kind of agree with the sentiment I'm not sure that I really support the motion. Councillor Stroud. Thank you um, I concur with my fellow councillors Councillor Marsh, Councillor Norris, everyone um, but can we make an amendment to say safe hole presence throughout the Blakeview and surrounding areas or is that too open? 
Clayford area, whatever. If you want to add Playford, then that changes the motions. It'll have to be an amendment. It can't be a word substitute because it would change too much of the alteration of the motion. If you took out Blake View and put Playford Council area, that changes the motion substantially from one particular suburb through to the whole suburbs. It'd have to be an amend um, an amendment if you wish to. Yeah, to, can we do to that? Change that so you keep everything else except for. Um, Blake View, so we have the administration, liaison of the local service area, superintendent, LSA, of SAPOL, request an increase of SAPOL presence throughout the city of Blayford. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're looking to achieve? Yes, thank you. Yep. Is the amendment final? The second? Uh, oh, Councillor Strada, is there anything else you wish to add to <coughs> that? No. Councillor Rantoulis, are you wishing to second the amendment? Am I able to speak to the motion that was already there, or am I too late now? Do I have no choice to, but to speak to the? Yeah, the I've amendment. got to see. Well, I've got to. I've got to make sure there's a seconder first. So if there isn't a seconder, <laughs> then the amendment will lapse because there isn't a seconder. If there is a seconder, then I'm obliged to deal with the amendment. And then once we've dealt with the amendment, the amendment can one of two things will happen: the amendment becomes the motion. Or if the amendment fails, then we can continue for those that haven't spoken to tweak on the on, on the original amendment. So I need to find a second to first. Does someone wish to second the amendment? Uh, yeah, you've already spoken to the motion, Councillor Smallwood Smith. So you can't second the amendment. So Councillor Baker spoke, I think. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Baker, are you seconding the amendment? I want to speak, but I don't want to second. Are you seconding the amendment, Councillor Bates? Yes, I'm quite happy to second okay. that. I was going to speak on that issue anyway. I, I, I don't think it's appropriate to just identify one single suburb in the whole of the city of Playford. And if we are going to get any form of um, increase in patrols or anything like that, it should be citywide, not just in one area. Councillor Rentoul, if you wish to speak to the amendment. Uh, yes, I do, uh, Mayor. Look, I I, uh, I support the the broad intentions of the previous motion put forward by Councillor Coppin and, and now the revised motion. Um, I will say this, from my personal experience dealing with SAPOL, they, they deal with statistics, with number of phone calls, with number of complaints. So you've got to be specific. That's my understanding of the discussions I've had with them respectfully, now going back, while I certainly support the intent, to go back to SAPO and say, we want um, further uh, officers throughout the entire city, while it's, it's noble and it's, I think the intent is, is right, I think they're likely to come back and say, well, the city of Playford is a huge area. Are you serious? Right, so the, these are things that, uh, ought to be considered. So ultimately, I'll, I'll support the amendment um, if, if it gets up. But in the first instance, I do support Councillor Coppins. So right now, I won't be supporting it. Community support for, for, for safety, right, in, with respect to police presence, attending to um, crime in our area is, is important. What also is important is that um, state politicians, federal politicians, and local um, uh, councillors are seen to be doing something about the issue. And that what, that's what I believe the intent of this motion is. Councillor Coppins, I believe, is now advocating for his, his community. Each one of us can do the same thing. You can, oh, I can speak for Virginia Wrangell Vale. Um, um, others can speak for Elizabeth, One Tree Hill. Um, I believe that it should be more narrow uh, focused and therefore I support the original motion. Um, I won't support the amendment in its current form, but ultimately if it gets up, I will of course support it. Thank you. Can I ask a question? You can speak to the amendment. Those that already spoke to the original motion okay. can speak to the amendment. They can't speak to the original motion. You just can't, if you've already spoken to the original motion, you just can't second the amendment. So those of you that have, that have spoken in the, or for the original motion can speak if they wish in the amendment, but there's only a small number of councillors who haven't spoken who can spoke to the, speak to the original amendment if the amendment fails. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Um, 
I just had a question. Like, I feel like the whole intent of this motion is essentially something you're already doing at these meetings anyway. So instead of asking you to do it now, we're just asking administration to do the same thing. Would that be correct? Well, the administration are at the meetings and, and provide most of the update from an administrative point of view. Um, as it is, I provide an update as well based generally on what you raise in here uh, or anything else that comes through. There's a couple of administrative staff, depending on particular issues that may or may not be pertinent, that they pick up through their uh, ordinary course of business, whether it's security in and around particular buildings, youth development, um, social and community development through the social plans, etc. So, um, yeah, they pretty much do that. We're just formalising it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Councillor Reefy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also want to echo the uh, comments made by Councillor Rontoulis. I think um, uh, citywide, city it's uh, safe and not going to bother about it. It's too broad. Um, they do um, target specific suburbs, uh, from my experience, uh, based on number of complaints. Uh, having previously written to the Minister on a number of occasions myself, uh, of what I have noticed that uh, residents have seen increased p police presence in those streets or areas. Um, and I think if Councillor Coppin's motion doesn't get up, uh, I would encourage him to write to the Minister and he'll probably uh, get a positive outcome through that. Um, but uh, I don't think that SAPO will bother looking at citywide because it's just too broad. Councillor Gossing. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to try and drill down here um, by asking this question. Um, and it applies to both motions, actually. Um, what would liaising actually look like? As the motion is in relation to the administration, I don't know if Mr Groom has a viewpoint. Uh, through Mr Mayor, um, as, as the Mayor's outlined, there's already a forum that's set up um, mm. with the right structures in place and the right people around the table. So for me, it would be to continue our work in that group, which both has uh, the Mayor's input and as he's, as he's advised you tonight, also has the input from the administration. So for me, uh, I think it would look, it would be a continuation of that. And I think the most effective way for us to do it is to use the structure which is in place rather than seek to create a, a separate structure. Can I make a comment now? <coughs> I've asked a question. Well, you can, you can still have your say, so yes, you can ask um, a question. So just in, uh, a comment about this. Having attended um, several neighbourhood anti-crime meetings um, over the years that I've been elected member, what I've heard from the experts that, that go to those meetings is um, the patrols actually occur based on, as um, Councillor Rintoula said, data and crime facts. Um, and I just feel that if we're specifying uh, particular areas, we're actually telling experts where they should be rather than listening to the actual data that, that they collect. So it does concern me if we are specifying places that they should be. Councilman. Yeah, thanks. That um, I'll I'll support either either way. Um, there, there's merits in in both forms of of, of these um, emotions that that are before us. But um, I, I I do hear hear you in regards to it, it is very very broad. Does that mean statistically we need to um, gather a lot more information versus being being specific? Maybe there's events already happening in 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 blank views. So that's why it was a necessity to to bring it forward. But I'll support both um, both styles. And if this one does get up, it, it will it will have my support. But I still come back to that we are elected members and we're elected to provide advocacy. And me personally, I have no hesitations in not supporting someone who wants to be specific to an area because regardless where I live, the city of Playford is still our home and I don't care who and who is elected to what ward, we should be supporting one another when it comes to safety concerns like this. So um, either way, it's got my support, um, but I hear your intentions why you're very specific to, uh, to, to Blakeview as well and we've read it in, in the paper. But let's just um, keep supporting each other and if people want to bring specific um, areas forward, well, let's support 
All right, it is. We are a city of play for council. Any other councillor wishing to make comment? If not, Councillor Stroud is the member of the amendment. You can close if you wish. No. All right, councillors, we have the amendment that is put before us, so I'll put that. Those in favour? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Those against? The amendment is carried. So the amendment becomes the motion. Does anybody wish, there's only a small number of members from my recording, I think it's Councillor Rintoulis, Gossink, Arifi, and I think that's, that's all that are eligible to speak now because they didn't speak on the original motion if they wish to speak. If not, I'll just put the, the motion that we've got. There's no one else wishing to speak. Then I will, so the amendment becomes the motion. Now I'll put that, those in favour. Those against, the item is carried. So the item is carried, but the motion be set aside as a division has been called by Councillor Baker. So those voting for the motion, if you could raise your hands, please. So the motion is carried. We move on to reports, item 15.1, ALGA consultation papers on page 22. Does someone wish to move the staff recommendation? Happy to move. Moved by Councillor Stroud. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Stroud? No. Find a seconder. Councillor Nuzan, sorry. Yes, happy to second that. Oh, it's a little bit hard to see that last light in that corner, just when you're zooming around. I presume you don't wish to speak. If there's no other councillors wishing to speak, then I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. Move to item 15.2, budget update report. Somebody with the councillor, Arifi. Yeah, I'm happy to su support the staff recommendation. Just want to make a, a comment. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps uh, the... The CEO, Mr. Green, might want to consider uh, an inform informal gathering or information session, uh, providing update on, on some of the key, key projects um, that are happening across the city, in terms of you know the, the time frame, del delivery, you know completion time frame. For example, you know Fremont Park uh, upgrade uh, and number of other important projects that are happening across the city. Uh, in terms of, you know, um, are they, you know, within the budget? That sort of information would be handy um, for the elected members. Mr Green. Um, through the Mayor, thanks Councillor Reefy. Um, we'll, we'll think about the right way to, to provide that information to elected members, but um, we will do so. So you item final seconder, seconded by Councillor Norris. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Norris? No, okay, thanks. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I'll declare that carried. We've got no informal discussion. So we'll now move on to the confidential items. So Councillor Rentoulis can for this first item. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of... ...made that the public be excluded from attendance at the meeting with the exception of the people listed on the screen. Can I have someone move that way? Councillor Marsh, would you like to speak to us? Thank you. <laughs> Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley.
Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, I remind councillors that we are online and we're back to the meeting. The meeting is now public. Councillors, we move to item 17.2, request for internal review of the council decision on page 106. So, councillors, in relation to the item that we move into confidence under section 92 of the Local Government Act that in order to be made to exclude from attendance the, at the meeting the members of the public, except for those listed on the screen, under section 93A. Does somebody wish to move that, way? Moved by Councillor Onyazans. Don't want to speak. And seconded by Councillor Baker. Is there any discussion for the mover and seconder? If not, any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried and ask that the doors... Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you 
know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, 
workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the City of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That be opened. Alright councillors, we're back online, so we now move to item 17.3, Code of Conduct Matter, and um, pursuant to section 92 of the Local Government Act 1999, an order is made that the public be excluded from attendance at the meeting except for those that are on our screen under section 93A of the Local Government Act. Does somebody wish to move that way? Moved by Councillor Tame. Do you wish to... Oh. Um, Councillor Smallsmith, I need to advise you that we're on item 17.3 in the open section. We have a mover in Councillor Tame. Does it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Baker. Is the mover or seconder wish to speak? Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Play Carried and ask that the doors be open. Just remind councillors that we're now in the open session. Just got to wait for it to come back online before we close the meeting. We're now back in the open session. As there's no other items on the agenda, I will close the meeting at 8.24 p.m. And thank you for your attendance.
support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the City of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour.